Hi everyone, we're coming quickly now to the end of Lent. Today is Palm Sunday. You can see that we've changed the color yet again. It's red now. So this is the day, um, as I said, called Palm Sunday, and we begin the holiest week of the church year. Do you know what that week is called? It's called Holy Week. During Holy Week, we remember the last days of Jesus's life, his suffering and his death on the cross. Today's gospel tells the events of Jesus' suffering and death. We might feel sad knowing that Jesus suffered and died, but we can remember that Jesus loves us so much that he freely died for us. His great sacrifice saved us from our sins and gives us new life. I have a felt board to help, me, um, to help you follow along with the story today, so I'm just going to prop that up here so that you can follow along the events a little bit better. Here we go. Um, the, the reading comes from a combination of Matthew, Luke, and John. So a reading from the Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and John. May Christ's words be on my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. So let's begin. Jesus wanted his gospel taught all over the world, so he chose 12 disciples to testify of him. He told two of his disciples to go and find a donkey with a colt that he could ride into the city of Jerusalem. This fulfilled a prophecy that the Son of God would come to Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. He went to the temple and cast out all those who were selling goods and the money changers. He was angry. He told them that his house was a house of prayer. They had made it a den of thieves. After he cast them out, many came to the temple to be blessed by him. Jesus was joined by the 12 disciples for Passover. As they were eating, he told them that one of them would betray him. They were all upset and asked, is it I? And he answered, The one that dips his hand with me in the dish is the one that will betray me. Then Judas, who betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said, It is you that has said that. And Jesus then taught them of the sacrament. He blessed the bread and the wine and told them that it should be taken in remembrance of his body and the wine in remembrance of his blood. He would shed for the remission of our sins. After Passover, they walked together to Gethsemane so Jesus could pray. Peter told Jesus he would never betray him. Jesus knew he would. He told Peter that before the cock crowed at dawn, he would deny him three times. The disciples kept watch while Jesus went into the garden of Gethsemane. In great sorrow, he prayed, Oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. And there appeared an angel before Jesus, strengthening him. And being in agony, both physically and spiritually, Jesus prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as great drops of blood falling down to the ground. After praying the first time, he came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you're not put to the test. Peter responded, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus went back to the garden and prayed two more times. Again, the disciples slept. Upon returning the third time, he said, Sleep now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, now is the one who betrays me. Judas came to Gethsemane, and brought with him a multitude with swords to arrest Jesus. 
He had told them to watch for a sign and they would know which man to arrest. He walked up to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Jesus said, Judith, Judas, you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? The disciples could see what would follow and feared for him. In an attempt to protect Jesus, one of the disciples drew his sword against the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Jesus touched the ear and healed him. They took Jesus as a prisoner to the high priest's house. Here's Jesus. And some of his accusers. Peter followed from afar when everyone was gathered against Jesus. Peter sat down among them. A maid recognized Peter and shouted out that he was also with Jesus. Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. After a while, another saw him and said, You are also one of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Another hour passed, and another said, I tell you the truth, this fellow was also with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately when he spoke, the cock crew, cock crowed. Jesus turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered what Jesus had told him about betraying him three times before the cock, the cock crowed at dawn. And Peter went out and whipped bitterly. Many false witnesses came, but Jesus was quiet and would not admit to anything. They spit in his face and taunted him to prophesy to them. When they asked him if he was the son of God, he says, you say that I am. They decided that this was a confession and they needed no further witnesses. Finally, they bound him and led him to the governor, Pontius Pilate. Jesus stood before Pilate. His accusers stated that they found Jesus perverting the nation, refusing to give tribute to Caesar, and claiming himself to be the Christ, the king. When Pilate asked Jesus if this was true, he said again, you have said it. To one of Pilate's questions about whether Jesus was a king, Jesus replied, to this end I was born, and for this I came into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Pilate decided he could not find fault in Jesus. The priests and elders continued with their accusations. When Pilate discovered that Jesus was from Galilee, he decided that Herod, who ruled over that land, should decide what to do with him. When Jesus was brought before Herod, he was glad. He Herod was glad. He had heard of this miraculous person, and he wanted to witness one of his miracles. He asked Jesus many questions, and Jesus would not speak. Still, the priests and elders continued to accuse him. So Herod and his men of war mocked him, dressed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him back to Pilate. The crowd was out of control, and Pilate knew he had to give them a prisoner to condemn. There was a man named Barabbas who was imprisoned for murder. Pilate asked the people to decide who they wanted to set free, Jesus or Barabbas. They chose Barabbas. He then asked them what he should do with Jesus, and they demanded that he be crucified. Pilate asked them what Jesus had done wrong, but he could see that they were determined in their choice. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this man. See to it, his blood be on us and on our children. Pilate had Jesus scourged or whipped and then delivered him to be crucified. Crucified means to be put to death by nailing or binding the hands and feet to a cross. Crucifixion was a slow and painful death. 
and it was usually reserved just for the most horrible of criminals or of slaves. The soldiers stripped Jesus, dressed him in a robe from Herod, made him a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. Then they mocked him, bowing down and saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and hit him on the head. Then they took off the robe and put his own clothing back on him. They made Jesus carry the cross on which he would be crucified to the hill where it would be erected. It was a long way and the cross was heavy. The soldiers asked Simon, the man of Cyrene, to carry it for him. Many people in the streets wept for him and many others threw stones. Two others were led with him to be put to death. When they came to Golgotha or Calvary, the soldiers gave Jesus vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted it, he would not drink it. Vinegar and gall were given as a medicine to people to help deaden the senses, and Jesus refused to drink the mixture because he wanted to be fully aware and conscious as he finished his work here on earth. As they undressed Jesus to hang him on the cross, they cast lots to divide his clothing among them. Pilate wrote a title and put it on his cross and it read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Jesus was then nailed to the cross. Can you imagine having nails driven into the palms of your hand and your wrists and your feet? The pain would be unbearable. Jesus forgave the soldiers. He looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then they stood the cross upright and placed it in the ground between two thieves. People continued to mock Jesus saying that if he was really the king of Israel, he would come down off the cross, then they would believe him. Many of them spoke of the miracles they had seen Jesus do. They told him to perform the same miracle for himself. Even though they had witnessed his other miracles with their own eyes, they still mocked him and would not testify of the wondrous things they had seen. The first thief, hanging next to Jesus, told him that if he really was the Christ, he should save himself and them. The second thief got angry at the first, saying that both of them were being punished justly. Jesus had done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The earth was darkened for three hours. Jesus knew the time had come and cried with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up his spirit and died. Upon his death, there was a great earthquake. Many of the people, including the king's guards, decided that this truly was the Son of God. Whenever someone was crucified, they broke their legs to make them die more quickly. When they saw Jesus was already dead, they did not break his legs. A soldier pierced his side with a spear and said, Little did they know that two prophecies had been fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken, and they shall look on him whom they pierced. After Jesus died, his friends showed their love for him by taking care of his body. Carefully, they took it down from the cross. Joseph of Arimathea was a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jews. He went to Pilate and asked him if he could take Jesus to a new tomb for his burial. Pilate agreed.
the gospel of the Lord. And we all say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that this is a really hard story for us to hear, but remember that Jesus' death on the cross is not the end of the story. Next week at Easter, we will celebrate his resurrection when God the Father raised Jesus in glory from the dead. And let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. As Holy Week begins, we pray for Pope Francis, that he will have health, strength, and courage to lead the world to a deeper understanding of Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our broken world, that all wars will end and peace be restored everywhere. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For people everywhere, that sadness and pain be lifted from everybody's heart. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Roya and all those preparing for their Easter baptism, may Jesus always be in their life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those things we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's finish with the words, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so I wanted to remind you that we have a lot of special masses and services this week. On Thursday, Holy Thursday, we have the Mass of the Lord's Supper. It's a beautiful um, memorial to, um, to the Last Supper dinner. Um, it's a beautiful Mass. It's at 7 p.m. here at St. Max. On Good Friday, we have two services, one at 3 p.m. and one at 7 p.m. The Easter Vigil, which is my favorite Mass of the year, it begins at 7.30 p.m., on Holy Saturday, the evening before Easter. And then um, on Easter Sunday, we will have three Masses, 7, 9, 7.30, 9, and 11. I hope to see you then. God bless.